Okay, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm here to interview uh, Jason Carmel um, about his uh, exciting work that he's presenting uh, at a poster session here at the ANA meeting. So Jason, why don't you tell us about yourself and your training and your interests? So I'm a child neurologist. I did my neurology training at Columbia and uh, I'm also a PhD interested in the motor systems. So uh, my current position is a assistant professor at Cornell and uh, I run my lab at a rehabilitation institute called Burke in White Plains. So, uh, and your abstract was in the rehabilitation category and uh, um, it deals with plasticity and recovery of function after brain injury. So why don't you talk a little bit about what kind of question you were trying to address with your work. So we, we see brain and spinal injuries as essentially a, a disconnection syndrome. The brain centers that control movement are disconnected from the spinal centers that execute those movements. So after brain and spinal injury, there's almost always some sparse connections between the brain and the spinal cord. And we thought to uh, strengthen these connections. This is an approach that others have taken. The innovation or the, the, the different approach that we have is to um, use the language of the corticospinal system or other neural systems as well, which is uh, electrical stimulation, in order to um, provoke outgrowth uh, at the level of the spinal cord and to strengthen connections using activity-dependent plasticity. A different sort of activity-dependent plasticity than I think most uh, neurologists are familiar with. We think of activity-dependent plasticity as changing synaptic functions, making them stronger. Um, the particular um, anatomical locus for our changes, we think, is at the terminations, where the corticospinal tract actually terminates within the spinal cord gray matter. Uh, those connections sprout out and form stronger connections, and that has behavioral relevance for the, right. for the animals. Sprouting of the axon terminals. So your um, work is very interesting in this instance because you took a chronic injury model and uh, tried to see if a chronic deficit could be so why don't you tell us about the model? That you right. Used. So, so there was a sort of empirical and a scientific question that we were trying to figure out. Uh, the empirical question is obviously most of the patients who we see are chronically injured. They've had neonatal brain injury. They've been involved in accidents. Um, for adult patients, they've had a ischemic stroke. Um, and so, uh, months to, to years afterwards, can we um, can we actually recover function in these people. Scientifically, um, we've looked previously at the separate effects of activity-dependent plasticity and injury-induced plasticity. Injury itself causes sprouting at the level of the spinal cord gray matter. Um, that gets uh, augmented with stimulation. Do the, does stimulation have to be um, uh, presented at the time of injury? In other words, um, you know, do those processes have to happen simultaneously or can it be added on later? And so that was the, the core scientific question. So in, in rats with partial corticospinal injury, uh, we stimulated the intact fibers. So we cut all the fibers from one side and then electrically stimulated on the intact side with hopes of promoting uh, connections between the same side of the brain and the spinal cord, right hemisphere to right side of the spinal cord. In other words, can we improve the right hand in, in humans or the right forelimb in rats? And you started about two months after the injury. Right. right. So this is, uh, in, in humans, you might call this um, subacute, but in, in, an, in the animal world, this is certainly falls in the chronic category. And um, so uh, these rodents have a stable deficit of forelimb control as we measure their, their walking over an irregular surface where they have to take sensory information in and move it into a motor program. When we apply the electrical stimulation, uh, which we do um, using electrodes implanted over motor cortex. Um, we stimulate in order to provoke uh, a movement in the contralateral forelimb. And uh, what we see is um, we stimulate each day, six hours a day for 10 days. And uh, about two weeks later, we start to see a decline in the number of errors as they're walking over this irregular surface. Um, that, that functional deficits continues to get better even beyond the stimulation period. So while we see anatomical outgrowth at an early time, say 10 days, the functional effects um, continue to improve. Uh, the function continues.
continues to improve and um, the function persists as long as we've looked out. So from the time of stimulation, at least two months later. Wow. So this seems like it would have really exciting translational implications. Can you kind of talk about right. what so, you think those are? Absolutely. So uh, humans with these types of injuries, brain, spinal, strokes, um, have a similar disconnection syndrome. Um, we think that we can make um, uh, hand impairments better by strengthening the intact circuits uh, after injury. How we do that in our rodents, we put electrodes um, on top of the dura. Um, we see a, a dual strategy. One is using non-invasive brain stimulation, not for alteration of cortical excitability, which has been its main use in the, in the stroke field, but actually as a trophic uh, effect on, sp on spinal axon terminations. Um, the other would be to actually use a very similar strategy to our, to our rodents. Uh, you know, targeting specifically the, the uh, impaired uh, representation and, um, and delivering this, this electrical stimulation to, to promote connectivity. So with an implanted device? With an implanted device. That's, that's really fascinating. So, um, and at your institution, you, you know, you're doing animal studies, but there's a lot of uh, human rehab research. So right. Think, um, do you plan on moving forward in the near future, or what, what do you see happening? So we've, we've um, the first trial that we were planning is to use um, a non-invasive form of, of stimulation called transcranial direct current stimulation. This is in children with uh, congenital hemiplegia, and we're treating them as they're getting into school age. Um, so most of their, most of their injuries happened uh, before or at the time of birth. And uh, so that would be our first trial, but we're certainly interested in, in uh, looking at other strategies of, of delivering uh, electrical stimulation safely and effectively. Well, that's really exciting. I want to thank you for your uh, time and sharing your work with us, and uh, I want to thank everyone for your attention. So. And thank you to the ANA in addition to this opportunity. They've also given opportunities for young investigators like me to learn from uh, department chair about how to become an independent investigator. It's been an invaluable experience. Great. That's great.